In this video, what I've learned in 2020 growing indoors Dutch buckets with the Flora series from General Hydroponics. If you're going to start this setup on your own, you just need a five gallon pail or a bunch of five gallon pails, a mesh paint strainer, a grommet, and uh, you'll need some piping to put it all together. As you can see here, uh, the inside of both bins, whether they're a big bin or small bin, are just filled up with perlite. There's a three inch drain going down to my main reservoir off of the inch lines. The irrigation setup is just done by PEX tubing connected with shark bites and rainbird irrigation tubing. I've got valves so you can uh, turn either side on and off and I've added myself uh, another valve there for the drain to make the water changes very easy. I'm going to go ahead and do a water change right now. And while I do that, let's take a look at the rest of the beds. I'll wedge this uh, tube underneath my reservoir just to help it drain. The lighting setup, I'm using flies in 1600 watts. Okay, if you're wondering what's going on with the purple and the Barney, it's a little bit of a story there. I ordered a chair off of Amazon. It was supposed to be green accents. Instead, I got this chair. And this takes me back a little bit to uh, junior high and high school. My mom bought me one of these 80s jackets that's uh, deckled all out in purple. Anyway, so my nickname uh, for quite a while in school was Barney. So your conception of Barney and mine <laughs> might be a little bit skewed or a little different. To everybody else, he's just a friendly dinosaur. To me, well... I love you. <laughs> so as a result, anytime I seen anything purple today, I couldn't help but just flash back. The chair was enough to put the purple boundaries over the edge. Now here's a cool look at both sides of the uh, big tote beds and it, I was scratching my head forever to try to figure out what I had done differently here. You'll see the left and the right side, the cucumbers and the beans, they're climbing together especially. How they're growing very differently. I finally figured it out. These are the leftover plants from the uh, Great White experiment that uh, I'll link up top. That side. Whatever, one of the sides. I'll link it up there, you can see kind of what uh, I did for the experiment. The vegetable production has been really good. As you can see, there's lots of cucumbers on both of these sides. And if you sneak in there and look, you can even see the beans are uh, kind of all over the place as well. This plant is just about done. It was one of the first cucumbers that I planted. As you can see from the harvest here, this is probably about every two, maybe three days, get it uh, that many beans. And cucumbers, I'm getting about four or five cukes every day right now. Kohlrabi, that's the new one. This is the other one that we took out. There's my wife uh, holding it. Gives you a good idea of the size comparison. We took out the cabbage at the same time. Although that one wasn't as good or wasn't as big, it still was very flavorful and very good. I ended up actually making a batch of uh, soup. My mom's comps borscht. Uh, there's a picture of it. There's a link up above if you guys want to learn to make it for yourself. And if you do decide to make this stuff, I urge you not to eat it fresh. As silly as that sounds, this soup tastes better after it's been in the jar for a day two days and then reheated it. It's, it's so much better. The texture of the leaves, I think, is what does it for me. That's the uh, cauliflower growing away and it's still doing really good. That's about the size of a softball, just uh, as a size comparison. My broccoli growing really big 
but it's not producing anything yet. Here's the basil. I have already clipped off of there a few times. If anybody has any good basil recipes, I would love to hear from you. Peppers are growing quite big. The biggest one on there, you can see it by my hand size. It's a little bit bigger than a golf ball right now. Very healthy, doing very well. Of course, with great things, there's also stuff that doesn't work out for you. This tomato plant never ended up producing, never found out what was wrong with this thing. I ended up actually pulling it out and uh, quit torturing the thing and put something else in this place. There's a bean growing there now. As you can see, the new tomato plant that's in the tote is doing much better. What I ended up changing that I think might have solved the problem there is uh, changing the nutrient balance. Less nitrogen, more potassium and phosphate. And that one is doing quite well on the other toad as well. Of course, uh, one of the things that you also got to do is pollinate. This definitely helps the uh, increase the yield. Super quick to do. Just take a little brush and I use the same brush so that the pollen is spread all over the place. Another trick I learned from a, I have a friend YouTuber of mine, you can see the video up here, I'll link it up. As of late, these are some of my struggles. I'm getting a little bit of brown spot in my leaves. This plant is just about finished, but the leaves did that before they shriveled up and died. You'll also see some of the fruits, instead of producing, they actually end up shriveling up like that and uh, the nutrients go back into the plant. I'm pretty sure that's just the uh, relation to the nutrient levels in the reservoir. So I am bumping them back up. They'll be at uh, 1,000 or greater, from around 11 to 1,200 parts per million. Here's the old reds, 819. There's a the level. I'm also using more reverse osmosis water than I was initially. Now I'm using three gallons of RO to one gallon of tap water. And that's just because my tap water seems to have a higher parts per million in there than what it initially had. Nutrients I'm using are still the general hydroponic series. Armor SI, Kelly Magic, and then the three floras, the micro, the grow and the bloom. To mix it with nutrients, I'm just using a syringe with a blunt nose instead of a needle. Since I've experimented with uh, Great White, I'm totally sold on that stuff as well. So that's uh, definitely something I supplement my reservoir with. My mix ratios per gallon here are listed. I'm uh, right now mixing at uh, it's step eight in the book, and that's my just go to, that's the solution that I'm going to use. And that's because I have stuff through various different parts of the grow all the time. I might switch back to the five. We'll see how this goes before I do anything. If anybody else is growing veg in the flora series, whatever you're mixing, I'd love to hear about other people's successes and what their mix ratios are. That's not my own. Like I said, it's a step eight and it's right off the General Hydroponics website in the uh, recirculating reservoir instructions. Once I do mix my new fresh nutrients, one at a time in a pail, and I'll just grab anything that's laying around handy to stir this stuff up. Once I've got them all mixed up, I'll dump it into my reservoir. Now it's been a little bit of a different year with the COVID 